Dork Lair. Welcome to another Dork Lair action figure review. Today I'm taking a look at the Mafex The Dark Knight Returns Batman. This figure took forever to come out, but it was worth the wait. This thing is awesome. It's the first figure in their um, Dark Knight Returns line, just like we just recently got the first one in the Hush line. They've got a few more different Batman figures coming out in the line. They have a Joker coming out, and then they have um, one of those Batman figures does come with the Carrie Kelly Robin. So a pretty cool line. This figure is awesome. I actually think I might like it slightly more than the uh, Hush Batman just because it doesn't have a, just those little things that kind of slightly bothered me. Even though I love that figure, um, this has neither of those things. So I'm pretty happy with this one. It's a really highly detailed figure. Not cheap. These Mafex figures are not inexpensive figures. But, you know, if you want this, I mean, this is really the only option out there doing something on this level with the Dark Knight Returns. So pretty sweet figure. I'm, I'm happy I bought it. Uh, let's get into this review. Here's a quick look at the packaging. It's pretty standard Mafex box, but it's got all that Dark Knight Returns, Frank Miller stuff going on. The um, the picture inside is pretty sweet. I really like that. I kind of suspect that they're gonna have the same insert picture for, for all of them maybe, because this is actually the blue version from uh, the second book, the one where he fights the mutant leader. And so like it's got like the oval, it's a different one than the figure that we have here. So I imagine that that might be the picture behind all of them perhaps. That might be why it doesn't match the figure that we have in hand. But you can kind of spin around and see what we got. I bought mine on Amazon. I think that's an Amazon Japan sticker right there. But yeah, I mean it's a decent box. I don't usually keep my Mafex packaging. Um, it's not like high quality, but this one looks pretty good. I do like that backdrop image there. So pretty cool stuff. All right, getting a closer look at the details on Batman here. This is a big, chunky figure, but because of Mafex and because of the way their articulation works and how much attention that they pay to articulation, this thing moves really well. It's an awesome figure. There's a couple of places where it doesn't move quite as good, but uh, overall, I mean, the articulation is incredible on this thing. Uh, but we can start in here at the head sculpt, take a look at that Frank Miller, Batman, older Batman, older Bruce Wayne. This does not come with an unmasked Bruce Wayne head, unfortunately. I think the second release will, and that is the one that's all tore up in the blue suit. And then I think the third release might also have a Bruce Wayne. I'm, I'm, I'm not exactly sure what each one comes with, but you can see the ears there, the really square chin. Um... Really nice wrinkles in the cowl and stuff and the uh, in the mask. So a lot of nice details in the face. I don't really see any paint errors or anything on mine. Mine seems clean. In fact, it seems a little bit cleaner sculpt and uh, not sculpt wise, but paint wise than my Hush Batman. My Hush Batman had a little, just slightly sloppy. But yeah, that's a great looking head sculpt. And then when you get into the suit itself, um, very cool the way they've gone with almost like a gritty sort of wrinkled look to them to kind of match that Frank Miller gritty art and all the kind of wrinkles and folds in the suit that you see in the comic there. It's very cool. The emblem is actually sculpted in. So there's a line around and mine's pretty clean. I mean, I have a little bit of gray right there. Might not pick up on camera. But for the most part, it, they stayed within the lines there, down into the gauntlets. Again, it's it's a grittier kind of feel. Everything is just a little more gritty, Frank Miller style. I do have a bent um, fin on the arm here that I think was just because of the way it was in the box. I think eventually that'll flatten out. I just probably got to heat it up maybe. Um, so that's a little bit bent out of shape, but that's not a big deal. It's not broken or anything. I just need to heat it and, and kind of re reshape it a little. And then you get into that belt, again, just gritty. Um, you know, it's comic booky, but it's also very gritty too. So that's pretty cool looking belt there. Again, all the wrinkles and folds and stuff down through the suit into the boots down here. And then you have a you do have a cut in the boots. Um, I you know it's a, there's a little haze overlap there on the back of the boot with the paint, like a little overspray, I guess perhaps. 
but for the most part, they look pretty good. A little gray on the boot there, but really, really sharp figure. Just awesome looking figure. And then as we get into the cape, it's a pleated, essentially like a pleated cape. Um, and unlike the, the Hush Batman, it only has the two wires. You have one wire on, along this side and one wire along this side. So it's not quite as big and massive as the Hush Batman cape, but there is, you know, there's a lot of volume to it and you can really pose it up and sort of get it into some cool looking positions, just that the back tends to drop down when you're, when you're posing it. So, um, you know, not quite as much posability as the Hush cape, but also not as big and bulky. And that's one of the things I like. And obviously like the, the Hush cape is supposed to look like the really massive um, Jim Lee cape in the comics and this one's not but I do like how they've it's less bunchy here and here where it tucks in under the cowl I feel like the whole cape meeting the cowl area just seems a little more clean on this figure and then you can get a look at how it is from behind so yeah the sculpt paint and details are pretty awesome on this thing I think one of the questions going into this figure after seeing a lot of the promo picks was how well he was going to stand up straight. And I think he looks pretty good standing up straight. And he's got the same thing as Hush, where the legs don't quite go fully straight, but um, he stands up tall pretty well. I don't think it looks weird to me at all. Okay, so first comparison here he is next to a couple Mezco figures. On the right is the new Supreme Knight that's kind of in the same theme here. It's like the older, buffer, bigger... Um, you know, seasoned veteran Batman. And then on the left is the Sovereign Knight Batman as well. And a couple other Batman characters. We have Batman Beyond on the left from Mezco. And on the right is the Red Hood from 112 Shop. That is on a blade body. So you get a sense of those two in scale. And then here's the Mezco Harley Quinn that just came out. I got to get a review of that up at some point. And on the right is the uh, other Mafex Batman, the Hush version. And then here he is next to a figures from a couple other lines. The left is a kit bashed Mythic Legions figure. And then on the right is the new Green Goblin from Marvel Legends out of the retro line. And then for accessories, he comes with his second portrait. Pretty sweet. Another clean paint job on mine. Um, I really like this head. Sneering. Oftentimes, paint, you know, companies, they, they don't really nail the sneering head. But I feel like they kind of hit the nail on the head with this one. In addition to the fists that he comes with, he has a pair of open action hands. He has a pair of open, sort of relaxed type of hands. He's got a pair of gripping hands. And then he has a pair of semi-closed fists where you have that thumb that's detached that somebody pointed out on my last video. I, I assumed this was for holding the batarangs, but they also mentioned that what you could do with this is you could thread the wire of the cape through there and have him sort of holding onto his cape, which is a pretty cool look. And then he comes with eight of these batarangs and he comes with eight because what you can do is you can take this hand here and you can thread it through the fingers and have him um, gripping onto like all of his batarangs like that. So a whole bunch of batarangs that he comes with. So that's a nice touch too. And he also comes with the standard Mayfix flight stand that a lot of figures come with. Finally, for articulation, the head can look up a little bit, not a ton. I do wish, that's one place where I wish I got a little more articulation was looking up because when this guy likes to crouch and when he's crouching i want him kind of looking up a little bit more but uh not too bad he can look up a decent amount i just wish it was a bit more and then he can look down he can look side side he can twist his head and so quite a good range of motion in that in that dual um, articulated neck there lifting the cape up you can see his shoulder articulation so there's this big butterfly joint in there and he can come up 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 over the top across the front. He's not gonna come across the front from the side, but when you come up over the top, he can definitely get swing it around the front quite a bit there. Um, you know, it can butterfly back as well, and then up and down too. So pretty good butterfly joint there. And again, it being a big chunky figure, it actually is pretty darn good with articulation. There is a twist up at the bicep, and then there's a double jointed elbow in his arm. You come up about that far, which is, again is very good for a big, thick figure like this. So there's really no twist at the gauntlet, except that at the elbow, you can twist it just a tiny little bit there. At the wrist, you have the ball 
hinge type thing. And these wrist pegs are that same Mafex just straight peg that they, they're nice and tight on mine, um, but I've seen them be problematic on other Mafex figures. Again, part of the articulation is in the cape with that, with those wires. So you can kind of do a lot of stuff with that. I'm just pushing, putting it out of the way to, to get into this torso area. Can crunch back really far, and then it can crunch forward quite a bit as well. Definitely gonna see some holes in the back as you crunch forward there, but he's got a cape, so it's not too big a deal. And then he can go side to side, but it's kind of tight, and it's, it's a little tricky to get it to do that um, side to side thing, so. You have to kind of find that spot and, you know, he can get that way. Um, and then he can get over on that side too. Again, big chunky figure. His waist is on a ball joint, so he can do a lot of twisting and um, crunching there. So full crunch forward. He can get that far forward with a full crunch when you combine the upper torso and the waist there. The belt is glued on in the back. It's free floating in the front, so when you move them around, it gets out of the way, but it is glued on in the back. You can drop the hips down and then back up. So when you want them to kick forward, get a little more action there going forward and you can come across this far. And then he's got the double jointed knees. Even with the double jointed knee, he's not going that far back. Again, he's a huge muscular dude. He can't really go all the way back with that foot. He can go out into the splits pretty much as far as you would ever need. You can twist at the top of the thigh, angled rocker at the ankle. So as much as you could ever need, he's gonna turn that way. It'll spin around and then he can point up this far and then he can point back down. So tons of great motion, toe articulation, everything there, just a lot of great motion. I, I love this figure, it's just, it's fantastic. I mean, it just feels really good in hand. It's really the first Mafex that I feel confident about, that I don't feel like I'm gonna break. It's chunky, it's big. Um, I really like this figure. This has been such a good year for Batman figures that at the end of the year, I almost feel like I need to do my own just Batman top 10 list because it's just been a solid, solid year. And this figure is still pretty available. It's kind of tricky to import it right now. Um, but one place where you can import it confidently is Amazon Japan, which is where I got mine. It's a great site because they use DHL. They don't charge a ton for DHL. It's super fast and their overall price is like 85 shipped. So that's very competitive with everybody else in terms of pricing. So, I, you know, if you're going to get this figure, I'd probably suggest checking Amazon Japan first and then going from there and seeing where else you might have an option if it's too much on Amazon Japan. But Overall, awesome figure. Thanks for watching my review. And until next time, may the force be with you. Follow me into the door.